Hi, this is Mr. Rubenstein, <clears throat> and this is the third part of the Math B 2008 June exam. Uh, we're up to question number seven, which says, uh, which of these expressions represents the sum of the sequence 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11? Now, each of these answer choices has this summation notation, which I'm going to explain a little bit on the side. When you have something like sum and they've got um, an n as the starting value, let's say n equals 1 to 3, and you have some expression in here, let's say n squared plus 1. What this means is, is that you start by plugging in for n this value that's down here. And you plug it in, you get 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. Then what you do is you increase the n by 1, it becomes 2. You plug that into the equation, so it becomes 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. And you add that answer to what you already have. And then finally, uh, you put in 3. Now you're going to stop at 3 because this top number tells you when you should stop. So you plug 3 and you get 3 squared plus 1, which is 9 plus 1, which is 10. Then you add the three numbers together, and you get your answer. Now, sometimes they ask you to go backwards, like in this case, where they tell you like 2 plus 5 plus 10, and they want you to come up with this shorthand for it. Well, in this question, let's take a look at the different choices. Uh, choice number one says 2n plus 1 as n goes from 0 to 5. So if I were to expand out choice 1, I would first plug 0 in. When you plug 0 in, you get 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1, which is 1. Then you plug 1 in. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. And as you can see, that's not becoming 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. So we're going to stop doing that choice. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1, which is 4, which is not 3 again. The only choice left is choice 4. But to show you that that works, um, first you plug 1 in to 2n plus 1, and you get 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3, like we hoped. Then you plug 2 in, you get 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. And then finally you plug 3 in to get 7, and 4 in to get 9, and 5 in to get 11, which is exactly what we wanted. One problem that some people have is they misunderstand this top term here. That's not how many terms there are always. It's just when you stop. Okay, moving on. Question number eight says, which value of a does not satisfy the inequality? Now, for this question, if it was not a multiple choice question, it would be a lot more complicated. But in this case, since it is a multiple choice question, I think we should take advantage of that just by testing all the numbers. When you put negative 1 in, trying out choice 1, you would get absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And we're checking to see if that's greater than 2 times negative 1 is negative 1 minus 3 is negative 5. So it does satisfy that inequality. If you try choice 2 and you plug in 0, you would get 0 is greater than negative 3, which is also true. If you plug 3 in, you get 3 is greater than 2 times 3 is 3 is 6, minus 3 is 3, and that is close, but not true. And finally, the only choice left is, is choice 5. It's choice 4, which is negative 5, which is a, it would become regular 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13, and that's the only one that's not satisfied. So that's your answer. Question 9 says, if 0.5 comma 2 is rotated counterclockwise 90 degrees about the origin, its image will be point. So there are formulas for these, but I, I think you don't need to, to memorize the formulas. If you draw your picture accurately, which I'm going to do here. So here's uh, 5 comma 2. I go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right 5, up 2. So here's the point. Uh, first of all, when you rotate this point uh, counterclockwise, counterclockwise is going sort of this way around 
the origin. So when you rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, you are going to end up somewhere in, in, in quadrant 2. And, and already, from uh, just, just based on that, you could um, probably get, get your answer choice. There's only one point in quadrant 2 of these four things, uh, choice 3, negative 2 comma 5. But let's imagine that there were other choices that had, for instance, a negative 5 comma 2 was also a choice. It might be um, confusing. Um, the thing that, that you realize is when you rotate this thing, it, if you rotate at this point, 5, 0, you rotated that 90 degrees counterclockwise, it would end up at 0, 5. When you rotate the point two, uh, 5, 2, that is, it's going to end up over here. Now, the coordinates of that point, if you draw it accurately, seem to be negative 2, comma 5. And in general, if your original point is x, y, and you rotate it clockwise uh, by 90 degrees, you are going to get uh, negative y, comma x. Question 10 says, what is the sum of 5 minus 3i and the conjugate of 3 plus 2i? Well, you have to know what the word conjugate means. And the conjugate of a number a plus bi, the conjugate is going to be a minus bi. And uh, that goes in reverse also. If it was a minus bi, it would become a plus bi. So they want to know what's the sum of 5 minus 3i and the conjugate of 3 plus 2i, which is 3 minus 2i. Now, adding complex numbers, you could just think of the i as if it were any variable, like an x or something. So um, I'll, I'll get rid of the parentheses. 5 plus 3i plus 3 minus 2. I always be aware of this. If that was a minus, you'd have to change this sign. But it wasn't. 5 plus 3 is 8. Minus 3i minus 2i is minus 5i, which is um, choice 4. Question number 11. They have a circle, center O, and they tell us that arc AB is congruent to arc CD, and they want to know which of these statements is true. Well, if arc AB is congruent to arc CD, there's a rule in uh, geometry that when the arcs are congruent, the chords that cut them off are also congruent. So those two chords are, um, are congruent. And let's see if that's a choice. AB is congruent to CD. Yeah, that's a choice. That's choice number one. Question number 12 says the expression cosine squared 4 theta plus sine squared 4 theta is equivalent to. Now, on this question, you have to be aware of um, a, a famous trig identity, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. That always equals 1. No matter what angle you pick for theta, that's going to be true. And there's actually not any work to do on, on this question because this identity, if you were to replace the sine, the, the theta with 4 theta, it would still be an angle. It would still equal 1. And that's why the answer to this question is choice 1. You could have also plugged in numbers for theta just to, to verify that that comes out to be true. Okay, that's going to end this section.